think you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kashyap Chamruti, and I work as part of Red Hat's cloud engineering team. And I spend time focusing on integrating KVM-based virtualization components into OpenStack Nova. So I split my time between multiple communities. <clears throat> so what's the motivation for this talk? Um, as most of us here know, since the beginning of this year, there have been a flurry of disclosures involving side channel attacks. And the, the disclosures kept coming in all the way until earlier this month. The most recent one being Port Smash, all the fancy names. So that, that impacts um, hyperthreading, processors with hyperthreading. So, and this has made um, choosing CPU models for your virtual machines a bit more cumbersome. So this talk aims to provide some sense of clarity, um, hopefully, about how do you go about arriving at an optimal virtual CPU configuration. So before we proceed, a quick note on what we won't cover in this talk. <clears throat> So we won't be touching any of the internals about side channel attacks, about Meltdown and Spectre, or how to exploit them, or any of the detailed performance implications involving these. So for those, there have been several talks throughout this year, beginning from FastM and Kernel Recipes, and last month in Edinburgh um, at KVM Forum and Open Source Summit. So I refer you to check out those talks if you're more interested in the gory stuff there. OK, um, a bit of a refresher. Most of he you here might be aware of this, but for those who are not, um, a bit of a refresher on the KVM-based virtualization stack. So at the bottommost layer is the Linux kernel with the KVM module sitting in there. On top of it is the QME process, um, which sits along with your other processes on the host. And QME has its disk images associated with it, and it interacts with the KVM via system calls. However, QMIS scope is kind of quite limited. So it has a per process view, only it knows about just one QME instance. So that's where the libvirt project comes in that provides a hypervisor agnostic API to manage multiple virtual machines and the lifecycle associated with that. And libvirt interacts with QMU via a protocol called QMU, QMP, it's a QMU monitor protocol. It's a JSON RPC based uh, mechanism. And top of it is OpenStack Nova that, inter that has its own virtualization drivers, um, KVM, Zen, several of them. So it interacts um, with LibreD and then launches virtual machines on your compute nodes. And then there's um, external tools like libguestfs, um, which provide a set of neat utilities to be able to examine your disk images um, via libguestfs, its own custom uplands. It's just a QME process. Um, so I should mention here that libguestfs has some safety controls in place so that no two processes can write to the same disk image. So <clears throat> OK. When, when you launch your Nova instance on compute nodes, most of the heavy lifting under the hood um, is done by QMU and KVM, assuming you're using vert type as KVM or QMU in your Nova configuration. So QMU provides a lot of emulated devices. Some say too many of them. And <clears throat> it also has the guest memory M mapped into it. And it provides several kinds of um, SCSI controllers, network cards, graphic displays, and so on and so forth. KVM, the kernel module, it has um, two vendor-specific modules, Intel and AMD. And it does a bunch of things. For example, one is to it safely executes the guest code directly on your hardware through the hardware extensions of, um, provided by processors from Intel or AMD. They all have virtualization extensions. They work similarly. So KVM handles the switching between guest and the host mode. And KVM itself does some emulation of devices in, in the kernel, things like clock or a CPU ID instruction, so that it doesn't have to 
do a heavyweight exit all the way to QMU. We'll see what that is in a second. So since QMU is just a, another process on your host, you can use your standard Linux tools like PS or task set, kill, et cetera, to manage or examine, inspect your QMU um, and Nova-based Nova QMU instances. So this is the classic um, guest execution loop involving um, KVM. So on, on your um, right mouse, you see QMU. Um, it sets up so system calls asking QMU to uh, KVM to create a vCPU, get the file descriptor back, and then it runs the IOCTL called KVM run. At that time, KVM will prepare to execute guest code directly on the hardware via so-called guest mode that is introduced by the virtualization extensions from Intel or AMD. And at that point, guest code is executing happily on the hardware until a point where um, the hardware cannot handle a certain device emulation. At that point, it asks, hey, can you please um, handle that for me, KVM or kernel? If KVM can handle that, for example, the CPU ID emulation, it will emulate in kernel and then um, again starts to execute guest code, prepares to execute guest code directly on the hardware. And that continues. However, if KVM cannot execute um, or emulate a particular device, then it asks QMU to handle that. And the loop continues. So QMU handles it, and the loop goes on. So the going all the way to QMU is called the heavyweight exit. And if kernel itself can handle that, it's a so-called lightweight exit. So that's the introduction. So let's see some interfaces that QMU and Liver provide to configure virtual machines. But before we go there, a bit of motivation why we should see them. So the default guest CP models provided by Libvirt, uh, actually not Libvirt, it's QMU, they're designed to work on any host CPU, but um, they're not really the ideal choice in your production environment. When I say work on any host CPU, that means that you don't have to do any compatibility checks that it will work on for live migration, things like that. But the default CPU models are really awful because they lack several CPU instructions that are critical for initializing entropy for your guests, for example, or uh, more obscure flags like PCID that, are become, that have become critical for performance and security, thanks to Meltdown, or the AES um, instruction set that is critical to have your TLS to be very performant. So thankfully, Nova doesn't use these things because before we go there, what, before we see what Nova does. So this is um, the output you see there is from a virtual machine that's launched with the default QMU64 CP model. So, and then if I traverse to the sysfs directory of uh, dash CPU vulnerabilities, there, if I grab for what all mitigations have in place, you still see that it's vulnerable to a variant of Spectre. So the point being that you don't want to use default CPU models absolutely at all if, you're, if you care about um, performance, not, let alone performance and security. So always try to use an explicit CPU model if you know your CPUs or use the defaults, um, default provided by Nova, which is the host model, and which we'll, we'll see in a bit what that exactly is. So what about the defaults of other architectures? We saw default of x86. So on the AX64 ARM ecosystem, they don't sensibly enough provide a default guest CPU, but the default depends on what kind of machine type you configure. So think of machine type as a virtual chipset that provides certain devices. We'll get to the topic of machine type briefly in a later section, but for now, think of it as a virtual chipset. So it depend, there's different kinds of um, boards that ARM emulates. So depending on that, the default CPU is configured. And other architectures like S390X and PPC have their own defaults based on whether you're using pure software emulation or hardware-accelerated 
um, drivers like KVM. Okay, the most simple interface for configuring vCPUs um, is the command line and on Qemu, if you don't do anything, if you don't provide a CPU option, then the default is Qemu64. As we've seen, we don't want that. So we want to provide an explicit CPU model for that. The simple thing is to provide dash CPU command line and followed by that, a particular named model like Ivy Bridge, Haswell, whatever, whatever, that are supported by the Qemu binary on your host. So along with providing named specific CPU models, you can also control what CPU features you can expose to your virtual machine. So in this variant, you see the Skylake variant of a CPU in this example, and followed by that, a specific set of features we are turning on and off. So if you want to find out what are supported models on your host, you can refer to Cumulus Help or Libvirt's um, command line tool Versh CPU models, and followed by the architecture that you're running. So what about runtime interfaces? So Qemu provides several runtime interfaces that uh, Libvirt uses at its daemon launch time so that it can cache those capabilities because the capabilities won't change for a given Qemu version. So it makes sense to cache them at the start of daemon startup time, and then you don't have to do that again and again. So there's a bunch of um, interfaces. So we, we won't d delve into the details. That's out of scope. So as a quick, but as a quick example, here is one um, runtime interface to probe QME for the details about CP models that, that a Q, given QME binary on your host offers. So here's query CPU definitions. It provides all the models that QME supports and, and it thinks like what are the features that are unavailable, meaning here you see an empty array um, for the unavailable features. What does that mean? It means the Vesmere CPU model will run without any modifications to it, meaning you don't have to disable or enable any features to run on a given host. However, if you see a list of features enumer enumerated in the unavailable features section, then you have to disable them explicitly to be able to run that model on the host. And it also provides other information like whether the CPU model is migration safe, it means that Qemu won't add additional CPU features or things like that to, so that it will break live migration compatibility. So in this part, let's see um, what are the different kinds of CPU configuration modes and how do you go about configuring CPU, specific CPU models, and set of features. So some of you here may already know this, um, and I've talked to some operators who've used these things. The first is the host pass-through. Um, as the name implies, it just passes through the host CPU's capabilities, CPU ID bits actually, came with that, that's what it does behind the scenes, as it is to the guest. And that's provided by CPU-host command line on QEMU, but that's taken care of you for you when we use Nova's host pass-through config attribute. So this is just to show what's going on behind the scenes. However, the host pass-through is not really free of caveats. So the first thing is that neither QME nor Libvirt will provide a predictable CPU for your virtual machine, for your guest. So you can't rely on having a predictable CPU there. The other thing is, if you have a mixed set of CPUs in your environment, then live migration with host pass-through is an absolute no-go. <clears throat> so host pass-through is quite performant, um, but if you have live migration as a strict requirement in your environment, like most scenarios, then it's not really recommended. Assuming if you have a mixed set of CPUs, that is. And when else can you use host pass-through? So if you're lucky enough to have a data center full of identical CPUs, then it makes sense to use host pass-through. But also bear in mind that um, along with identical CPUs, you need precise microcode, matching microcode version on your host, on your source and destination host, to be able to line migrate. Um, and also identical kernel versions on your host. 
thanks to all the vulnerabilities that have been rolling in from the beginning of the year. So it's easy to miss that. Sometimes people may wonder why do you even have to have microcode version matching precisely? Because you may think if there is a microcode version 57 on source and 58 on destination host, if both of them provide identical CPU features, then it should be okay, right? No, because performance counters may differ between the versions of these two microcode. So even though the CPU features are same, so even that can impact line migratability. So that's the thing that I learned from a colleague about um, when I was wondering, is microcode, um, should microcode version match as well? So there's that. <laughs> See, the, the other kind of thing that um, QME and Libert offer is the plain named CPU models that we just saw, where, which are just vendor specific uh, models that are named after particular generations that Intel and AMD and others release. So, from a typical Nova instance, QME log, you see the output uh, there with QME command line followed by a bunch of CPU features enabled or disabled. The names CPU models are a bit more flexible in line migration than host pass through because you can custom um, prepare a CPU model and the flags in your environment so that you can have line migration compatibility across your disparate set of hosts. Qumi comes in with a set of built in default CPU models um, and custom CPU models, specific named versions, and the set of CPU ID flags that it recognizes and libvirt also exposes this via uh, its own XML, XML representation. So you can refer to those. And the third way is this thing called host model that is a libvirt abstraction. So it, it, it tackles a few problems. One is that it, pro it tries to provide maximum set of CPU features from the host CPU to your guest. And while retaining line migration capability. But it has some caveats. We'll see what the caveat is in, in, in a minute. And the third thing that host model provides is that assuming you have the right set of updates on your host, the microcode, kernel, et cetera, and so forth, it will add the critical CPU flags to mitigate your guests from vulnerabilities, some of the meltdown spectre variant, like the spec CTRL. Um, flag, you see an example there, automatically when you're using host model. So that's a nice thing that it does. So host model tries to provide a, the best of both the host pass through and the named CPU models that we saw. And for better or worse, I think it's for the better, it's the default of Nova. At least Nova's libvirt driver. When I say default of Nova, I'm referring to um, libvirt KVM QME drivers. Yeah, that's a simple example that you see from a Nova guest definition. How do you enable host model? You just mention the CPU mode as host model, and optionally you can enable or disable a specific set of features. And libvirt will translate that into a certain suitable CPU model based on its own internal representation in XML. So what about the caveat that I mentioned about host model? So with line migration, when you're using um, host model and trying to do line migration, what happens there is the source get CPU definition is transferred as it is to the target host. And once the guest is migrated, it will see the identical CPU that it saw on the source host, regardless of the capabilities that the target has, even though they're um, more capable. But when the guest call reboots, meaning you do an explicit stop followed by a start, it can pick up extra CPU features because if the processor is a newer version on the target host, then host model will pick up those features because recall that host model tries to provide maximum set of features from the host. So that will prevent you from migrating back to the source, original source host. So if line migration in both directions is an absolute requirement for you, then host model may not be the best option. So if that's not a requirement, then you can happily go with the host model. So what about Nova? Um, 
Nova is driving all these things. Provi Nova provides configuration interfaces to drive all these things that we were talking about. So it provides a set of configuration attributes for the libvirt driver. So one is the CPU mode, um, straightforward. It can be any of the three modes. Host pass through, the first one we talked about, or um, custom, meaning the name, the CPU models, or the host model, the, the libvirt invention of, um, that provides the best of both host model and uh, provides the best of host pass through and named CP models. And you can explicitly provide CP models via the CP model config attribute and the extra features with the other one, other config attribute. So, what are the possible values for that? You can refer to the help outputs of different, different um, commands out there, QMU or the CP map XML file. And we've also written some documentation for Nova itself. So, Nova has. Um, recommendations as to what you should use in which scenario. Not really comprehensive, but good enough to get started. So, I refer to that um, for the Rocky release. I think that's where we introduce that. So, that's a simple example from a um, compute node. So, you just set these config attributes in the libvirt section of your node.conf, saying this, in this example, we're just seeing a custom named CP model. Hey, give me a fixed version of Ivy, Bri Ivy Bridge uh, CPU, and also to enable these CPU flags to mitigate the guests from, all, or all the guests that are running on that compute node from um, CP, CP flaws. So lastly, what, um, what, what, what should we consider, what, what aspects do we want to consider when configuring CPU models and features? So the first thing is that if your scenario is like most any others, it, you have a um, het heterogeneous set of um, environment with different kinds of CPUs in your data center. Here I'm just showing Intel as an example there. So you have Westmere, Broadwell, Nihalem, whatever, whatever. So how do you find a compatible CPU model among those variants? So this is where the libvirt um, comes in and does the heavy lifting for us. And these are the APIs that Nova uses to co compare on different CPU models and find a compatible model for, um, your, ho for your cloud environment with a given set of uh, host CPUs. So the two APIs there, compare CPU and baseline CPU, the, those are the two ones that Nova uses today. But recently, um, in 4.4 release, a couple of months ago, I think, um, Libvirt came up with a new variant of these APIs. So the older, what is the reason for this? The older version of these APIs, the compare CPU and baseline CPU, they don't take into account what your host, um, the KVM and QMU, the hypervisor, is capable of. So the, these newer ones, hence the name hypervisor CPU in, their, um, in the API's name, that takes into account what your host um, hypervisor is actually capable of. So it is supposedly a bit more smarter. And I did some tests, but I wanted to see some more bug reports before we wire this up into Nova um, in, in a future release. So as a quick example, um, in this XML, I won't show a lot of XML. This is the only XML you'll see. Um, in this example, you're, you're seeing two CPU models um, in a single XML file that I call. So there's a Hassel variant and there's a Skylake variant. In the Hassel variant, we are, we are asking to require a set of CPU features. And for the Skylake variant, we are asking to disable a set of um, CPU features. And how do you find what is the intersection there? So that's where um, the Libvirt baseline hypervisor CPU will compute um, what is the intersection set of features, what should be enabled explicitly, what should be disabled. So those are the set of features that are enabled and disabled after computing the baseline. So that's the intersecting set of features given our Skylake and Hassel variants. So the point being that it's the so-called baseline CP model that will allow line migration across your Hassel and Skylake variants. So that's what Nova uses, the older ver version of this API. So I just wanted to show what's behind the scenes. Of course, you don't have to run this manually. So what, what, what's happening behind the scenes is sometimes instructive to see. So what else should we consider? 
So we briefly talked about machine types. Um, so machine type, to refresh again, it's um, kind of a virtual chipset that provides sort of default devices. And it has two main goals. So one is that a single QMU binary will emulate different chipsets. For example, Intel's i440FX, or more popularly called as PC machine type. And the other one is a Q35, that's a slightly more recent one. And the other thing, which is the most important one, is to provide a stable guest ABI. What does that mean? <laughs> so the, it means the virtual hardware that is exposed to the guest remains identical regardless if you upgrade your host software or hardware even, you change that. So the, the hardware that the guest sees remains the same, so there's no change in that, or even if you lie migrate it. So that's a critical thing that um, machine types provide. Whenever there's a new QMU release, Q, it, it comes with a new machine type matching the version of that release. So here in this you see the PC machine type, and it is alias to the latest released um, version PC machine type. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's released in 1996, so it's about 20 plus years old. So I first called it legacy, but legacy can trigger allergic reaction in people's brains. So, so, so I used traditional. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the other one is um, Q35. It's the so-called more recent um, one, but it's still quite re old. If you can see the date again there, it's when 2009, so nearly 10 years old. So we're trying to, it has a set of features. I can't do justice to machine types in one talk. It deserves several talks. Um, there have been some talks at KVM Forum in the past. Um, so the point being, the version machine types provide the so-called stable guest ABI to your virtual machines. So why talk about machine types? Why should we care about that? Um, because sometimes machine types alter CPU features, unfortunately. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does. And changing machine types is really guest visible, meaning you can look at it as a, an analogy is that if you replace, rip your hardware, random hardware from your host and plug in something else, it's equivalent to that, except in the virtual world. So machine types, um, replacing, change, changing machine types is, I guess, visible. So when you upgrade QMU and you're using libvirt, assuming you're using libvirt driver, so you have to explicitly make, um, ask Nova to change the machine type. So the point of the stable guest ABI is that even though you have a newer QMU, you up, up, upgrade your QMU, even though it's new enough and bringing new machine type version, libvirt or Nova won't gratuitously update that version for you. You have to explicitly ask that so that to preserve the stable um, guest ABI. So once you ask Nova to change it, you need an explicit call reboot of the guest, and only then will it pick it up. So the main um, point to take home there is that before changing machine types, um, you might want to evaluate your guest workloads, and then uh, because the CPU features can differ in some cases, not all, but in very few cases. <clears throat> so what about, um, how do you go about updating to patched um, virtual CPU models? We're talking about x86 here, obviously. So the first thing, you, I, I've, I've talked to some operators who already did this, so I'm, I'm sure um, those who are here would know that. But the first step here is to update your microcode on your host kernels, um, on, on your host, and the host kernel as well, and the guest kernel. You can check the sysfs directory to see what mitigations you have in place um, after doing that. Once you're done with that, then you can update libvirt and QMU, so it, it, they, they'll pick up the new CPU models. Followed by that, you tell Nova to please update me to the patched variant of whatever CPU model that is relevant in your environment. The IBRS models are the ones that have the fixed fixes for some of the spectre or meltdown. I'm already drawing a blank which one it is. So check those. And there's guidance over there. You see a text file, but you don't have to read that in QMU source. And there's a nice document written by my colleague Daniel Baranger. There's a rendered version of this, um, an HTML version on his blog. 
there's a reference at the, at the end. So there's a bunch of details there. Before you upgrade, you might want to refer to that. So once you tell Nova to update to a relevant CV model, the last step is to, you can't avoid call rebooting the guess, no instances, so that they'll pick up the CPU ID bits, right CPU ID bits. So that's the very high level problem. Maybe there are some steps in between that I'm missing, but um, I'm sure you'll figure out as you do them. But this is the, the core things that you need to keep in mind. What about CPU flags? There are multiple of them. I'm not going to read them all out loud, but to mitigate some of the spectrum meltdown, there are several uh, flags that you need in, actually not a whole lot of them actually, just a few. But some of them are built into the um, fixed variant of CPU models for QMU, and Libert picks them up as well, so you can use them when you're using named CPU models in your um, compute environment. Again, for that, um, refer to the blog post that was written by QMU upstream and the other one as well, um, the QMU CPU model details that's in the QMU source itself. <clears throat> so what about the expectations from um, applications like Nova and expectations from whom? That from projects like QMU and Libvirt, which are doing the heavy lifting behind the scenes. So up until now, whenever there's a new CVE, QMU added it fixed CP model with a set of features in it, and Libvirt tags along and adds an equivalent CP model in its XML representation. But that's not really working out so well, given the flurry of CVEs that, that's been landing since January. So Cumia and Libvirt upstream have decided that they're not going to add any more new um, named CP models whenever CV comes out. So instead, tools like Nova or Overt or whatever management applications, Kubert, they should explicitly enable CPU features as required. So Nova today takes care of this already, so no problem for us. Um, for other management applications that haven't um, provided a facility to, pro um, sup uh, to supply granular CPU features, that's, a, that's considered as broken. So there's a more interesting thread there. Um, on Libbert and QMU mailing lists, so I just quoted that from there. So to kind of sum up, um, don't go with the default CPU models, and we don't even need to go when we use Nova because it has the same default. So you want, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have identical CPUs in your host environments for maximum performance, go with host pass through. But if your case is like anybody else's, with a mixed set of CPUs. Um, choose Nova's default, but if you know your host CPUs inside out, then you can figure out a custom baseline. Some operators already do that. Just this morning, I talked to somebody on the train, um, so they were they already compute a custom baseline for their own uh, environment. People already do that. And before machine uh, changing machine types, you want to evaluate workloads. This is not like super important one, but just important enough to merit a mention. Um, because not all, uh, it, it's not all machine types change CPU features, so, but still deserves a mention there. And finally, you, you want to have like a systematic procedure to go through your updates across all the relevant components, and then you can do the final step of using the patched CPU models and, and flags. I think that's pretty much it. Um, that, these are the references that I mentioned, uh, some of them. Um, I didn't update it with the KVM forum links, but you can find them on the internet over there. So that's that. So if you have any questions and comments, more than welcome. I think there's a mic over there. I'm not sure it's working, but. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Hi. So uh, on the, one of the first uh, slides, you showed that uh, KMO uh, 64 is available for all KPUs, and uh, uh, actually it's uh, not always true because KMO 64 includes uh, SVM instruction, uh, and which is uh, not supported on some Intel processors. <laughs> That's a and, uh, historical accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my question was, like you showed, uh, like uh, that uh, it's possible in Nova Config uh, to add extra uh, capabilities. Flags, uh, yeah. yeah, but 
is it possible as well to disable them in Nova Config? That's a good question. So no, that's a to-do item <laughs> on my plate. That currently you can only enable CPU features, but you can't disable them because the enabling is more pressing requirement from now. So that um, with all the fixed CPU models, you have to turn on specific set of features. But yes, um, that's not there in Nova currently today. You can't disable specific set of features. So that's a there's a bug on that for me. So you can put me on the hook for that later. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hi, impressive Hi. talk. Uh, just a quick note that this extra CPU flex. Can you please is, come closer? Oh, sorry. Mind? So I just want to note that this extra CPU flex stuff is just relatively new, so you won't have that in Newton or something like that. All I can't pass reasons. you. Maybe can, can you say a you bit can, more? You can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you, but it's, it's hard to follow. Go on. Oh, Repeat, so, so the, uh, the note I have is that uh, the extra CPU flex Nova config option. It's yeah. something appeared in Nokata. So um, you won't have a Newton or Li Liberty or some other. We backported it um, all the way back, actually. Uh, and at least I backported it three releases. I forget which versions. But if you're using any of the at least Red Hat versions, so it goes all the way back to them, six or uh, seven. Okay, I, I'm using Ubuntu, so that's, that's um, probably the problem I have. Yeah, the, the other question I have is, is related to this meshing types. So that's. I have the impression that the meshing types are practically, I, I mean, on Ubuntu 16, this is using something like a default, so this PC. So yeah. is there a way to configure that from, from Nova? Yes, and uh, Nova has um, two ways to configure machine types. One is you can configure it per compute node in a config attribute. So all the, all the Nova instances launching on that particular compute node will be given that Q35 machine type or whatever version machine type of PC. The other way is per image template. So on Glance, there's a metadata property. So you can use a metadata property for a template image and then use the machine type for that. So yes. Oh, makes well. sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Is, is there a way to configure QMU to use a specific default without having to pass them on the command line? Um, sorry, let's is say, there a way to what? Let's say uh, I want to have a specific machine type. Is it possible to configure specific machine types in QMU? By default. By default. Without having to pass them on the common line. The default is PC. Yeah, so like I have an environment where my command line is uh, limited in size and I'm reaching that, that size. And like. <laughs> QMU has several different kinds of configuration with machine types. It's kind of hard to hear in this, uh, in this room. Um, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit deaf. But we can um, talk about that. So, so, if there are any more questions, comments. OK. Thank you for the time. <laughs>